Hello mathematicians, thank you for joining me again today as we try to find the determinant of this matrix. Uh, and that might seem like a repeat to you because it is. In the last video we actually did the same thing. The difference today is that we're going to be using a different technique, whereas last time we used the definition of determinant to find that recursively, this time around we're going to use row operations. So what we want to know is what are the row operations and how do they affect our determinant and so if we go to the row operations, remember the things we could do with row reducing a matrix was we could take a row and multiply by a non-zero constant and plug that into the row we started with. We could interchange two rows and we could take a constant times one row, add it to another and place that into the second row. Now, if we look at these row operations, what we noticed was that if we perform this row operation on a matrix, this is going to change the determinant so that if we start it with the matrix A, and we'll say A prime is the ending matrix, then what we're going to get is that we will have multiplied the determinant by C. So this is going to be C times the determinant of A, or if we prefer, we could say that the determinant of A is 1 over C times the determinant of the resulting matrix. So that is, if we will find the determinant of our new matrix, we'd have to multiply by C from our original. Or if we want to find the original in terms of the new matrix, we would have to divide by C to account for the fact that we multiplied that row by that constant. Now, if we interchange two rows, what's going to end up happening is that my new matrix is going to be the negative determinant of the old matrix. So if I interchange two rows, it's going to change the determinant by multiplying by negative one. So if I want the new one, I can multiply the original by negative one. Or if I want the original, I can multiply the new determinant by negative one. Now if I take a constant times a row and add it to another row and replace in that row, what's going to happen is that the determinant will actually be unchanged. That is the resulting matrix will have exactly the same determinant as my original matrix. And so as we go through and we do these row operations, if we perform one of these two, we want to keep track of what we did so that we know how we changed the determinant. If we do one of these row operations, then we know that we didn't change the determinant. Now, when we're just interested in the determinant, we can also do column operations. That is, we can do the same thing for columns as we would for rows and they're going to affect the determinant in exactly the same way as the row operations would. Whereas we wouldn't use column operations for a row reducing matrix, we can use columns the way we would use rows when we're interested in a determinant. Now that we know what we can do when row reducing and how it's going to affect the determinant, what I'm going to do is start off with this one and I'm going to start reducing it. So just like I would for if I was trying to solve a system of equations, I'm going to take things so that I have a non, leading non-zero numbers of 1, and then I want zeros in the rest of the column, and then I'm going to work my way through. So in this case, I have a 1 here, so I'm going to leave that alone. And this is a 0, this is a 0, so I don't need to change that. But I do have a 1 here, so I'm going to try to get rid of that 1. So I'm going to take negative 1 times row 1, add that to row 4, and substitute that into row 4. Now, if I do that, I'm going to end up with what I'm going to call A sub 1, because it'll be A under one row operation. The first row stays the same. The second row stays the same. The third row stays the same. And then the fourth row is going to be negative 1 times 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 times 2 plus 2 is also 0. Negative 1 times 1 plus 5 is 4, and negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, plus 0 is 1. So I have the new matrix A sub 1 is equal to this matrix, and since we took a constant times a row, added to the other row, and plugged into the other row, what we get is that the determinant of A is going to be equal to the determinant of A1. So now that we have A1, we're going to row reduce this more, and so I'm going to move on to my second row. I have a 1 here. Now, as I'm trying to row reduce these, I don't necessarily need it to be in row reduced echelon form. I just need it to be in reduced form, meaning that I'm really just going to get an upper triangular matrix here. 
And actually, I don't even need these leaning terms to be a one because then I'm going to end up with an upper triangular matrix. I know that I can just multiply the numbers on the diagonal to get the determinant. So instead of having to turn this two into a zero, all the point is I can save myself some work because I don't have to do that. I can leave the first row as is, but when I'm working with this next one here, I do want to turn this three into a zero so that I can make everything below the diagonal a zero. And that way, I'm going to take negative three times row two and add that to row three and plug that into row three to get my new matrix A sub two. Now I'm going to leave the first row the same, the second row is going to stay the same, and then the third row is going to be negative three times zero plus zero is zero, negative three times one plus three is zero, negative three times zero plus negative one is negative one, negative three times two is negative six plus one is negative five, and then I'm going to leave the fourth row the same. So I have my new matrix given as follows. And what I want to point out here is that, again, I took a constant times a row, added to another row, so I haven't changed the determinants of my matrix. So I do know that the determinant of my original matrix A is the determinant of A1, is the same as the determinant of my A sub 2. Now that we have our matrix A2, we can reduce that again. And so as we go through, we have, okay, everything below this diagonal is a zero, below this diagonal is a zero. I move on to the third row, so my leading term here is negative one. I don't need to turn that into a positive one, so I'm not going to, but what I do need to do is I need to turn this four into a zero so that I can have everything below the diagonal be a zero. Now the way I would do that is, because this isn't a positive one, I just need to be careful about what I multiply by. So I'm actually gonna take four times row three, add that to row four, and plug that into row four. So as I do that, I'll get my new matrix A3 is going to be equal to one, two, one, negative one, zero, one, zero, two, zero, zero, negative one, negative five. And now the fourth row is gonna change, so I get four times zero plus zero is zero, four times zero plus zero is zero, four times negative one plus four is zero, 4 times negative 5 is negative 20, plus 1 is negative 19. So now I have my matrix A sub 3. Now if you recall, we had that the determinant of A was equal to the determinant of A1, was equal to the determinant of A2, and now that's equal to the determinant of A3, because again, I haven't changed the determinant because I've taken a constant times a row plus another row. Therefore, if I can find the determinant of this matrix, I know the determinant of my original matrix. Now, what we remember is that if I want to find the determinant of a triangular matrix, either upper or lower triangular, what I have to do is just multiply the entries on the diagonal. So, what I'm going to get here is that to find this determinant, I would just take 1 times 1 times negative 1 times negative 19. So what I would get is negative 1 times negative 19 is positive 19. So the determinant of this matrix will be positive 19, which means the determinant of this matrix and the previous matrix. And finally, the determinant of our original matrix will be 19. Now, if you look back over our last video, you'll notice that we did indeed get exactly the same answer, which is good, because we should get the same answer both ways because it's representing the same thing. Thank you for watching. As always, I hope you learned something today and I hope you enjoyed the process along the way. If you did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me to know which videos are helpful and it helps other people to find these videos so that they can also get help. Thank you.